In this session, we're going to take a look at working with CorelDRAW's PowerTrace. PowerTrace is a powerful vector application within CorelDRAW for automated tracing of raster images and conversion into vector images. If we scroll out or zoom down here, you can see I've got a line graphic here that's set up as a bitmap, and you can see the pixels are here. And we want to convert this to a vector. Now, one of the things you're going to be need to be aware of that if you have very poor pixels or a very low resolution image and we'll take a look at this. I'm going to go ahead and take this image. I'm going to go to bitmap resample and I'm going to change this down to 72 dpi and I'm going to select OK. And Then we'll zoom in. We can see we've got a lot of pixelation here so we're going to lose some detail when we try to convert this to a bitmap but here we've got very good resolution and we're going to be able to really accurately get our detail out. So here we've got our 72 and here we've got our 300. But I'm going to go ahead and go to bitmaps. I'm going to go to outline trace and I'm going to select clip art. Corel is going to want to reduce the bitmap and I'm going to say OK, reduce the bitmap. Then that's going to open up in power trace and Corel is going to look at the raster object and start to form vector lines and shapes around my object. Now I can see I've got a problem here because part of my graphic is filled and part of it is not. And what's happening here is that I've got a line segment that's knocked out. And I'm going to need to fix that. So I'm going to go ahead and select cancel. And if I've got an area like that in a bitmap, then all I need to do is go to bitmap and go to edit bitmap and I'll open my object up in Corel Draw, and I could paint a line in. I could also just put a line segment of vector in there, but we'll do this in Photo Paint just to see how it would be done. I'll go ahead and get a brush here. I'm going to bring this down to size 8, just about right there. And I'm going to go with, let's say, I'll go with my ballpoint pen. I'm going to take anti-aliasing off. I'm going to bring this back up to 8 on the ballpoint pen. Make sure we've got black selected, left click, hold down and just drag through there and repair that section. Then I can just go ahead and hit save. Go ahead and close photo paint. Now I can go to bitmap. I can go to outline trace and select clip art. Go ahead and reduce the bitmap. Corel will process the trace and this time you notice that because there wasn't a hole or a gap in the line I'll have all of my vector objects in my trace. Now I can left click and zoom in here and see what type of detail I'm getting in my vector trace. I can come up here and slide and bring my detail up as you can see there I can go and do more smoothing and smooth things out. Now you can see that's too much smoothing I'll go ahead and zoom out and you can see that's destroying my graphic. So I'll bring my smoothing back in. I can adjust my corner smoothing and you can see how that will affect my graphic right there and we're doing alright. You can see here that this is a pretty good trace. I can come here to colors and I can see how many colors I'm tracing under the colors tab. And Right now I've got six. If I want to change this to two And we'll go back to our settings tab, let that process, and it's going to change it to a two color trace. And now I've just got black and white as my trace. I can sort my colors by similarity or frequency. I can have my color mode as grayscale, CMYK, or black and white. Just go ahead and go to pure black and white and let that trace again. Also, we've got delete original image, remove background. If I click on this, I'm not going to remove my background. If I select it, it's going to be removed automatically. You see the transparency right here, removed right here. That's the transparency or the background removed. I can automatically choose color or I could specify a color. Come over here and click on white. But if I do that, you'll see that'll take all of that out of there. I can merge adjacent objects as the same color. I can remove object overlap and I can group objects by color. 
Right now I've got 39 curves with 1,649 nodes in two colors. I'm going to go ahead and select OK. Let that process and you'll see that what I've got here now is a vector object that I could ungroup and start to apply colors to. Come over here and get a yellow left click, drag that in there and start to apply colors to that. And I could go in with my Smart Fill tool in my Bezier and add some shading and highlighting to that also. Now let's take a look at the difference in quality when we've got an image like this one here that's only 72. But actually I'm going to go ahead and delete this. We'll bring this over here. This is our original 300 DPI object. I'm going to go to Bitmaps, Resample, and let's say a client gave us an image off the web that was only like 52 DPI and select OK. Now I'm going to go to Bitmaps. I'm going to go to Outline Trace. I'm going to go to Clip Art. We'll let Corel process that and we'll zoom in. And we can see that draw, even though we're saying take a lot of detail, is not doing very good with this because of the way the pixels are formed. It's not a clean graphic. So a lot of times when a client supplies you with a very poor JPEG image from the internet, you're not going to be able to trace this in power trace. You're going to have to go trace it by hand as we saw in earlier sessions. There are some things that we can do though. For example, I can improve this a little bit. I don't know if I will pull this one entirely, but I can go to bitmaps and resample and take this back up to say 300 DPI. I'm going to turn off anti-aliasing and I'm going to maintain aspect. I don't need that either and select OK. Let that process. Now we went to 300 DPI but we can see that because we didn't have anti-aliasing it didn't really make that big of a difference. If I hit Control Z, it's made almost no difference. But now let's take a look at bitmaps and we'll go to resample at 300 DPI with anti-aliasing turned on. Select OK and you can see we started to smooth this out. Now at this point I could take this and go bitmaps mode and select black and white. I'll go to line art and I'll try to clean these edges up. You can see I'm getting some of this definition back. I can bring this up and make it quite a bit darker and thicker as a monochrome or a line out. Now you can see we still lost some detail in the teeth. If I hit control Z and we go back, let's see if we'll even be able to, we're really not going to be able to bring that back. We'll have to fix that afterwards. I'll hit shift control Z, then I'll go to bitmaps and I'll come down here to Outline Trace and select Clip Art. Corel's going to want to reduce it. That's fine. Go ahead and process at that resolution and we're going to get a much better scan. Now, or excuse me, Power Trace to Vector. This is not that bad. It might be acceptable depending on the project that you're working on. You can also go back in and clean these teeth up after working with your vector tools if you need to to make them look the way they should have been. Select OK and we can see our scan compared to the other one is fairly close. It's a little darker or a little bit thicker but you can see that we can bring some of these images that have resolution problems up and working with them. So that's just an introduction to the power trace in Corel Draw X6 and the best thing to do as I said throughout this series is go get some images and experiment with some of the settings until you get it dialed in and get a feel for how it works and you should be able to do that really in no more than 20 or 30 minutes to see how that tool works and play around with the different settings. We'll go ahead and wrap here with Power Trace and we'll continue in our next session.